Have you ever wondered why we can make diamonds but not gold? Welcome to a journey that unveils the mysteries of chemistry, a place where elements dance and combine in intriguing ways. Today we're taking a deep dive into a question that boggles many minds. Why can we manufacture diamonds, those sparkling gems of carbon, but creating gold, the enduring symbol of wealth, remains an elusive dream? So buckle up and prepare to dive into the fascinating world of chemistry, where not everything that glitters is gold. To understand why we can make diamonds but not gold, let's start with how diamonds are made. Diamonds, born deep within the earth, are the result of carbon atoms subjected to extreme pressure and heat over millions of years. This intense environment forces these atoms into a crystal structure, creating what we know as the diamond. Now, let's jump to the modern day. Scientists have cleverly replicated Mother Nature's process in the lab, using methods known as high pressure, high temperature, or HPHT, and chemical vapor deposition, or CVD. In HPHT, a carbon source is exposed to high pressure and high temperature conditions, mirroring the natural process. CVD, on the other hand, involves breaking down gas molecules containing carbon, which are then deposited onto a substrate, leading to the growth of diamond crystals. This process, while difficult, is achievable, but why can't we do the same with gold? Gold, unlike diamond, is an elemental substance. It's not a compound, not a blend of different elements, but a pure, singular element that sits comfortably at number 79 on the periodic table. This means it's not something we can whip up in a lab by combining other elements. You see, there's this unyielding rule in the realm of science known as the law of conservation of mass and energy. This law states that matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. They can only change forms, so we can't simply take a bit of carbon here, a splash of oxygen there, and voila, create gold. No, gold has to come from gold. It's a bit like trying to bake a cake without any ingredients. Therein lies the rub. Gold is an element, and elements can't be made. But why is that? Gold's creation is not a simple process. It requires a cosmic event. You see, gold is a product of stellar nucleosynthesis, a process that takes place in the fiery heart of a star. This process begins with lighter elements like hydrogen and helium fusing together under extreme heat and pressure to form heavier elements. As stars age and exhaust their fuel, the reactions become more energetic and complex, leading to the creation of even heavier elements. However, elements heavier than iron, such as gold, require conditions far beyond those found in ordinary stars. These are only created during the explosive death of a star, an event known as a supernova. In this cataclysmic event, atoms are bombarded with a torrent of neutrons, rapidly producing heavy elements like gold. These atoms are then scattered across the universe, eventually coalescing to form new stars, planets, and yes, the gold we treasure so much. So, gold is born in the stars, quite literally, but why can't we replicate this on Earth? Creating gold isn't just a matter of chemistry, it's a matter of physics. You see, gold is an element, meaning it's made up of just one type of atom. To create gold, we'd need to change the very nature of an atom, transforming it from one element to another. This process, known as nuclear transmutation, is not something we can easily do in a laboratory. Gold is born in the heart of a supernova, where atoms are smashed together with such force that they fuse, creating new, heavier elements. To replicate this on Earth, we'd need to generate temperatures hotter than the sun and sustain pressures greater than those at the bottom of the ocean. Even if we could overcome these obstacles, there's the cost to consider. The energy required would be astronomical, making any gold produced prohibitively expensive. And let's not forget the potential dangers of nuclear reactions. So, creating gold isn't just hard, it's practically impossible with our current technology. Now, let's delve a bit deeper into the concept of nuclear transmutation. What if we could overcome the technological hurdles and focus on converting the closest isotopes or atoms to gold? For instance, let's consider mercury, which is just one proton away from being gold. In theory, if you could remove a proton from a mercury atom, it would become gold. But in practice, this is much more difficult than it sounds. First, we would need to use a particle accelerator, a machine that propels charged particles at high speeds. These machines are not only incredibly expensive to build and operate, but the process of accelerating particles to such high speeds uses enormous amounts of energy. 
Secondly, even if we managed to remove a proton from a mercury atom, the resulting gold atom would be unstable and radioactive, making it not only useless for practical purposes, but also potentially dangerous. Not to mention, we'd still have to deal with the leftover neutron, which could cause further nuclear reactions. So, while it might seem like an attractive shortcut, the cost of converting closest isotopes or atoms to gold is, unfortunately, far too high to be feasible. Now that we've explored the technical challenges and costs associated with creating gold, let's consider another important aspect, the ethical and environmental impact. If we were to pursue the creation of gold through nuclear transmutation, the energy required would be enormous. This energy would have to come from somewhere, and the most likely source would be non-renewable fossil fuels, which contribute significantly to climate change. Furthermore, the process of separating out the resulting gold could lead to the production of hazardous radioactive waste, which would need to be carefully stored and managed to avoid environmental contamination. And then there's the ethical question. Is it right to create something that nature has taken billions of years to produce? Would this not devalue the preciousness of gold? These are complex questions with no easy answers. What is clear, however, is that the pursuit of creating gold involves more than just overcoming technical challenges. It also involves grappling with significant ethical and environmental considerations. So we've learned a lot about diamonds and gold. Let's quickly recap. We kicked off with the magic of chemistry, exploring how it manifests in the formation of diamonds and gold. We understood that diamonds, despite their allure, are simply a form of carbon arranged in a unique crystal structure under extreme heat and pressure. With the right conditions, we can indeed replicate this process to create synthetic diamonds, a perfect example of chemistry at work. On the flip side, gold is not a compound, but an elemental substance. It doesn't form from a combination of elements like diamonds do, but is a pure element on its own. Gold is born in the heart of dying stars through a process known as nuclear synthesis, where nuclear reactions fuse atoms together to form new elements. This is a process that humans, despite all our scientific advancements, cannot replicate. Finally, we delved into the challenges of creating gold. The process of transmutation, turning one element into another, is not only highly complex, but also requires an enormous amount of energy. It's also worth noting that even if we could overcome these hurdles, the resulting gold would be radioactive, making it dangerous and impractical. And there you have it, diamonds, while precious, can be made. Gold, on the other hand, is a gift from the stars. So, what's the takeaway from all this? Well, it's quite simple and yet profoundly deep. The vast world of chemistry has allowed us to replicate and manipulate countless natural processes. We've learned to create diamonds, carbon-based gems born from intense pressure and heat. But when it comes to gold, a substance birthed in the heart of dying stars, we cannot replicate its creation. This highlights the incredible power and intricacy of the universe's natural processes. It's a testament to the sophistication of the cosmos and a humbling reminder of our limitations as humans. We can't always mimic Mother Nature's recipe book, especially when it involves stellar nuclear reactions. In our quest for knowledge, it's essential to understand these natural processes and respect their complexity. We learn, we grow, and we marvel at the wonders of the universe. Remember, while we can do many things, there are still some things that are best left to the universe. And don't forget to click the subscribe button for more fascinating insights into our world.